So we've made it here to Chalcatzingo. This is uh, south of Mexico City. This is a potentially an outpost of the Olmec. It was first excavated in the 1930s. But what's really interesting here is the carvings up on the mountainside that clearly show that it was Olmecs who did this. So we made it up to the, the booth at Chalcatzingo. We're just debating whether we can actually get up to the, the carvings and see if we can fly the quadcopter. Behind me, you can just see the pyramids. So we're gonna take a look at these and then we're gonna head up into the hills and find these incredible carvings. This is in the state of Morelos. Um, just not too far, but an hour away from Tepotzlan, south of Mexico City. Now this is fascinating, this is one of the Olmec outposts. And apparently it's been inhabited since 1600 BC. Now you must remember the very earliest Olmec, 1800 BC. So they could have been here from a very, very early age. In Nahuatl language, which is like the language uh, Teotihuacan and earlier, Chalcatzingo means the Chalcas, the Lords of Chalco, most precious site. It also means the, res the revered site of the sacred water or the revered site of precious jade stones. Now if that is the case, then this area could have been the source of some of the jade used in the Olmec world because we know some came from Guatemala but we don't know where some other of the jade came from the more bluey colored jade it was an important religious political commercial and administrative site here um, and it really was the the olmecs who kind of ruled here from about 1500 bc so so they must have sent some people out here to kind of you know check out the place look look for jade look for sites that they could work with um for, for potentially thousands of years and uh, they exchange products, belief, and the deity of the jaguar is very represented here. We'll have a look at some of the carvings up on the hill. But there's a small pyramid here, which is probably a later construction, um, but the whole area is terracing. So we know that the Spanish and the, some of the Maya and other people used this area for growing potatoes, crops, quinoa, and other such things. Um, but the stone sculptures here, this is what's really into the relief carvings that are extremely Olmec. So there's proof that the Olmec was certainly in and around Mexico City. We know some other sites in the area. We're going to look at some of those as well while we're here. But um, for now, we're going to just check out the pyramid, which have been partly reconstructed. There's caves up right in the top of some of the mountain sort of chunks of rock here. And it's the carvings we're going to look at, that, which are really important. One of them could even represent the plume serpent Quetzalcoatl, the very earliest depiction, along with Leventa, of this ancient god of uh, Mexico. This pyramid, it's thought, was built by the Teotihuacan culture, uh, probably around 200 AD, 500 uh, AD, something like this. But it's been reconstructed. There's also a bull court here. Uh, but this was most certainly an Olmec site before the Teotihuacan culture came here, uh, as we'll see when we see these incredible carvings. I'm just really interested because they were, had very strong agriculture here. So it would suggest they were harnessing the natural energies, the underground water, and the types of rock here, you can see like the redness of it, so it is magnetic. So they could have had the technology here, the fertility technology that we know the Olmecs were using at San Lorenzo and La Venta, later adopted by the Teotihuacan culture. So you can just about see these carvings here at Chao Katzingo. They're very faded, so it's hard to see them. So I'm gonna get in close just to see if you can see them at an angle. Now I'll put in an image of what it actually looks like on the video, but just wanted to get an actual close up view of what we're looking at. There's some on this stone as well, but these are incredibly difficult to see. 
whereas the ones over here are much clearer and we'll get everyone to step back so everyone can see it but here this is called the fertility stone i believe so this could represent a goddess figurine or something we see spirals on it it's really hard to see what's going on but there is stuff on here have these strange cut marks in the ground here which could be deliberate they could be natural but these are like the classic cut marks we find in various sites around the world but it's hard to know uh, if these just form naturally with pools of water or if there's something very significant about them we find these at Carahan Tepe, Gebekli Tepe in Britain of course I've no idea if these are significant or not but these are worth noting as an anomaly and we can just check if these have been uh, researched as being carved or not. He's holding something in his hands. Let's have a closer look at this. So there's the seated figure. And he seems to have some kind of helmet on. He's something next to his mouth. And he's holding something in his hands. It could be a baby. We do see that imagery in many different Olmec sites. But we also see these spirals, which intrigue me. We have like a double, little double spiral. It looks like number 96. And we have these other spirals here coming out like kind of smoke or some kind of energy or serpents and these are all up here you can see these and it looks like he's in some kind of room or machine or kind of capsule which some people astro ancient astronaut theorists especially suggest it is like uh, we find at lord pakal's tomb lid at palenque and also uh, still at 19 i think at laventa we have them all coming out here, but what could this be? Was this guy just taking a whole load of psychedelics? Or is there something else going on here? Because it looks like he's in some kind of thing. He's got a great headpiece there. So you can see some kind of a plant there. I wonder, I'm not sure exactly what plant that would be, but you can see kind of leaves coming off it. And just next to it, you see what look like acorns or droplets. Could they be droplets coming from this cloud? Is it, does it represent rain? I mean, it does, this is to do with water, this particular carving. So it could be the water god kind of summoning rain, using magic and shamanic powers to try and influence the weather, which is known these shamans could do. This gentleman here was just saying that there was a, a UFO sight that came from the a top. Light. A, light a light that came from the top of the mountain up here. Yeah. And all the way down over into the valley and then back up again yes, to the mountain. covered for two minutes. Yes. Let everything up in the valley. And, the, and I said, what size? And he said, about that size, light. Well, this is really interesting because this is very close to the same fault lines that we find at uh, Quilquilco. And also, I would, whenever they do rock paintings like this, this is often a vision quest site in North America at least. The guide here has been living here for 29 years and last August was the first time he saw this light, uh, this strange phenomenon happen. So this is quite an unusual thing. Why it's happening now, we don't know. Was it some kind of earth light? Was there some kind of rumblings under the ground? Or are the gods returning?
See a very interesting feline figure on this rock here. Almost looks Chinese or Japanese in some way, like a dragon. And up here we have uh, drops, looks like corn and drops of water with the great spirals in the sky, perhaps representing fertility and rain. So these statues here, these in fact represent some kind of feline creature, which obviously must be like the jaguar, the puma, which resides in this part of the world. But these look very strange, abstract forms, like almost like elemental ab godlike forms of these particular creatures, which were revered very highly in ancient times. So apparently on the top part of this one is, looks like a cactus and with the jaguar kind of hiding behind the cactus, ready to pounce. Although the cactus it could mean mescaline, it could mean various um, psychedelic substances. So this is a very interesting and abstract form again here at Chalcatzingo. So this rock here is called the creation of humans or the creation of man. This is a very powerful image, what we can see of it. Again, we have the red iron oxide here, which is, has this magnetic force, which can affect consciousness. It wouldn't surprise me if this was indeed carved and painted whilst under the influence, not only of some kind of natural psychedelic, but also the magnetic energies we get here, which has been proven by the earth lights that have been recorded here. So we see spirals, we see a human arm. If we look closely, see some kind of human form there, kind of flying. Very, very interesting. See spirals underneath, sort of turning into serpents. So behind me are the main temples here at Chalcatzingo. We've already been up to the top uh, to look at the amazing carvings. Um, but here you can see kind of reconstructed pyramids. These are probably from the Teotihuacan era, but they're beautifully done. It's like a ceremonial complex. And behind me up on the caves at the very top of this mountain, which you have to abseil, you have to kind of climb down. We can't do it today uh, with the group but there's paintings, there's stone carvings, there's many other things still up there. And it's still revered as a very sacred place. So it's just a very fascinating, very pristine, beautiful site here at Chow San Kedic. Because basically, firstly, you can't drive here. We have to walk 15 minutes because they're doing the road. No one ever comes here hardly. Um, but I've been here, got the t-shirt. I'm gonna have a quick look at these pyramids before we make our way back. Altar stone, like a monolith, really, just on the edge of Chalcatzingo. You can see the beautiful carvings all the way up it. So I'm just standing right at the altar of the Olmecs here at Chalcatzingo. Now, this is very interesting. Apparently, 23. Uh, 23 skeletons were found here. I don't know if that's a number is significant or not, but these were well preserved and there's still evidence here of a jaguar carving who they revered, uh, an, an animal they revered very much. 
and some other carvings here. Not much is left, and it's not exactly like the classic kind of altars we find at Laventa, which are like carved out of one piece of stone. This is like multiple stones, but it's still very, very interesting that it's here, and this is like the sacred burial place of some of the Olmec rulers here at this particularly fascinating site. Here, so this is one of the rare Olmec graves that have been found in Central America because this area is drier. It's not really particularly moist, tropical, so all the bones would get destroyed. This is actually, um, they would survive it, and apparently they've been preserved. So it's a fascinating, fascinating discovery. And I wonder if they can be DNA tested. That would be very, very interesting to see exactly where they came from. So this is a front view of a jaguar. These ones have been destroyed, unfortunately. But this one somehow got preserved. It was probably buried deep within the ground, but it's like a jaguar coming towards you. And you see the kind of grid pattern on this one. This one is really hard to tell what's on them, but let's just get photographs of all of them. So this is an interesting piece. This looks like it's part of an altar with relief carvings all around it. Very badly damaged, of course, but it does look like one of the classic Olmec altars. We see some kind of figure on this rock, standing upright. So these are incense. This is strange because we see very similar things actually on Olmec carvings. Now these are kind of incense pots or bags. We find them on Stella at Laventa with the chap, chap holding the bag and he's inside the great serpent. So I wonder if in fact they are incense. There's nothing more mystical than that. So this is part of Monument 9 from Chalkatzingo. You can see this amazing cross, like a serpent's mouth, and an entrance into the mouth. Now this is a reconstruction, obviously, but you can see some of the detail on here. This is not on display at Chalkatzingo anymore. You have to kind of come to the National Museum to see this at all. But it's quite beautiful stonework. We have some kind of Olmec headless figure at the base of it, kneeling down in the quizzo position. Absolutely amazing. Here we have some reconstructions of the Chalkatzingo relief carvings. These are quite remarkable. Look at this. This is the really good work, really good copy of the original from Chalkatzingo. Thank you. 